When I started in radio, it was very expensive to get an all modes VHF UHF receiver. Something like an ICOM R7000 could only be afforded by the most affluent of hams. If people had VHF UHF receiving capabilities at the time, they either had a old scanner that would only cover a section of the VHF UHF spectrum or maybe even a bit of extended range on their amateur 2 meter and 70 centimeter transceivers. But often they didn't cover very much either side of the amateur band. These days it's different. You can buy for very little money an RTL SDR dongle that plugs into the USB of your computer and turns it into a wide range VHF UHF receiver. My previous video, not long ago, showed how the antennas that were supplied with it are quite mediocre, but they could be improved slightly with some simple modifications. Today, I'm going to be doing some portable receiving with my RTL SDR, but not just on any frequency. This time, I'll try 23 centimeters, made possible because here in Melbourne, in our eastern suburbs, is a beacon that operates on 1296 MHz. I've never received on 1296 before and had no idea what to expect. But with the RTL SDR dongle going up to well above that frequency, there is only one way to find out. A trip on a train in the suburb that the beacon operates provided a great opportunity to see how the frequency propagated even in a very difficult receiving circumstance. Keep watching and you'll find out. The signal I'm trying to receive is VK3RXX, a beacon on 23 centimeters run by Allen VK3XPD. The video that follows was shot on my mobile phone, so it's very jerky, especially as much of it was done on a moving train. Still, the most important thing is the sound and you should be able to still hear the signals received. That was an encouraging result, even from inside a train. The distance from the beacon would have been about three or four kilometers. Next, I got off and went for a walk in local streets to see if I could still hear the beacon. 
initially I was unsuccessful. Then I found later that I was on the wrong frequency. Yes, the receiver drifts by up to five kilohertz. I walked a bit more and came across this park that was quite open and had a good spot where I could set up the computer and receiver. Another thing with these cheap dongles is that they are not necessarily frequency stable. I had the display reading 1296.5295 when I was in the train. I put it on upper sideband to get a wider bandwidth. As you can see from the display, it's several kilohertz off. You can see from the spike, it's considerably above the noise. can hear the frequency drift is quite pronounced. A good idea with these dongles is to leave them on for a while. It suggested 10 minutes for the frequencies to stabilise. In my case, I was turning the computer off and on again when I was walking, and that wouldn't have helped. There's also a 13 centimeter beacon, but that was just above the range of the dongle, so I couldn't get that from here. Now I'm just in a residential street and I can still hear the beacon. Here's another spot right beside a busy road. As you can hear, signals were also good from there. That's a distance of around 4 kilometres from the beacon. Not very much, and I'm sure 23 centimetres will propagate more, especially if I had a better antenna. What are some things we can learn? First of all, I used a cheap RTL SDR. It doesn't have a TCXO option. A TCXO is basically a stable oscillator, meaning that what you see on the dial is the actual frequency. Without that stable feature, mine drifted by as much as 5 kilohertz, and I think you need to have it on for a while for it to settle down. I didn't, as I was always turning it on and off as I was packing up and moving to a different location. So it's a good idea, if you're using an RTL SDR, 
so you have it on for a while so it settles and especially with narrowband signals like CW and SSB frequency precision is important whereas for analog FM being 5 kilohertz off still means that you'll still hear the signal even though it might be a little bit distorted frequency drift tends to be more severe the higher up in frequency you go so you might not notice it on 144 megahertz but you'll definitely notice it on 1296 unless you have a more expensive and more stable USB receiving dongle. Another thing that needs improvement of course is the antenna. The antenna I was using was about a quarter wavelength on 432 megahertz or three quarter wavelength on 1296. A small beam would be quite cheap and simple to make but would greatly improve performance. Another thing I found out later is that the beacon had a directional antenna pointing west. I was slightly off that beam. If I was more directly west of the beacon, I might have been able to hear a stronger signal for a longer distance away from it. Something else to bear in mind, especially for newcomers, is that repeaters are not very good at doing receiving tests. Whereas with a beacon, that's transmitting continuously. So is better for these sorts of experiments. The only issue is that beacons transmit CW and that requires better frequency stability than wider band modes like analog FM. Well that was my first experiences at 23 centimeter reception. Check to see if there's a CW beacon in your area and if you have an RTL SDR, even if you don't have much of an antenna, see if you can try receiving it. Let me know in the comments below your results. And better still, why not make a video? Because you're only receiving, this is one thing you can do without needing an amateur radio license. If you're just getting started in amateur radio, I suggest a book called 99 Things You Can Do With Amateur Radio. Check out my website vk3ye.com or search the title on Amazon. The book is available in both electronic and paperback form.